Good evening. The Premier League season is only a few days old and what a sensational opening weekend we had. And I promise you tonight is every bit as scintillating. On Match of the Day this evening, we've got six games for you as well as last night's action. Casting a critical eye over proceedings will be Alan Hansen and Lee Dixon. We commence with the champions, Manchester United. They were at Fratton Park, where, of course, they lost to Portsmouth last season. The commentator was Jonathan Pearce. With the champions able to bring in the brilliant but controversial Carles Tevez for his debut in place of the injured Wayne Rooney, it's not the night for Portsmouth to have a defensive crisis. Sol Campbell misses a third Pompey United clash in a row with a groin injury. Lauren injured an ankle in training. 21-year-old Martin Craney makes his debut. And Noe Pamaro makes his first appearance of the season. United have never failed to win one of the opening two Premiership games. Two changes from the draw with Reading. Tevez for Rooney. Nani gets his first United start in place of Silvestre. A daunting debut for Martin Craney, signed this summer from deadly South Coast rival Southampton. But remember, Portsmouth have won this fixture three times in the last four seasons. Came down from a steepling height, Scholes. Ronaldo got there in front of Pedro Mendes. Montari looking for Nugent. There's a little petulant shove on Nugent by Vidic. Two big, brawny Premiership boys. Always noisy, the home fans. Competitive, but somewhat fragmented early on. It hasn't really settled the game into a pattern. Tevez. Nani. Tevez, good control and spin and scores with a majestic strike to give Manchester United the lead after 14 minutes. Scores with the hammer blow, but the intricate skills came from Carlos Tevez. Brought it down, strength and poise about the turn and Scholes drilled it. Cracking finish. Paul Scholes has now scored more Premier League goals for Manchester United than any player in the club's history. He has 96, one more than Rud van Nistelrooy. Rio Ferdinand to Carrick. Looking for Nani. Training was just a little bit too far off him. This is Ebra, space for him as well, over the top. He used to be a striker in his early career. No wonder he didn't stay a striker. Ferdinand away. Mendes. Slipped away by Tevez, working back hard. It's been a feature of Manchester United. Full skulls in midfield, so competitive. Michael Carrick alongside him, quick to close on Portsmouth players. Real feature of Manchester United early on. Tevez. Competing again. Ronaldo. Kicks to his left. Still Ronaldo. James got his hand to it, couldn't hold. Tevez is in there. And away by Dolly Pamarok. Ball zipped away from David James and Portsmouth still under pressure. Nani. Craney tackle. Nani picks it up. Ryan Giggs looking for Ronaldo and taken away from his own goalkeeper by Harrison. Portsmouth under pressure. Ronaldo in full flight. Checked back, had a glance, whipped it in. I don't know whether he slipped David James, but he couldn't hold on to it, and Tevez was very nearly there. Portsmouth have changed in this second half to an orthodox 4-4-2 formation. Two tactical changes, Taylor on and Traore on for Mendes and Craney. Kicks. 
scores. Magnificent display by him. Ronaldo. Kings making the run through the middle there. That's opened up a little bit of a gap. And Ronaldo can find Nani. Chance for Manchester United. Nani on the outside. Saved by David James Boot. Lovely move by Manchester United. Into the path of Nani. On the outside. Onto the left boot. Saved. Paramount for Manchester United to win having lost two valuable points against Reading at the weekend. Scholes had to react quickly. Davis was sliding in. He picks up the return from Ronaldo. Nani is in the left side position. Back to Scholes. Took a touch. Blocked in the end by Troy. Scholes again. Tevez had to snatch at it. Quickly on by the brilliant Scholes. And again. Force it through to Tevez, the thigh trap, and then the snap shot. Here, Jurabjian, who's a third party ownership of Mascherano and Tevez, caused so many problems for uh, West Ham last season. Taylor. Tucker did well, forcing it wide. Taylor with an ink cross. Benjani coming from a deep position, wasn't picked up. He launched himself at it. 1 1. No one could see that coming, and no one saw Benjani coming. Ronaldo. There's a fizz about Portsmouth now. Ronaldo turning away from Montari and still going and looking for Tevez. Distant clear. Now Steve Bennett here. That's good refereeing by Steve Bennett. He saw Montari flick out a foot and try and catch Ronaldo. And though the Manchester United player went on, it was a caution with offence. It's Ronaldo. James two fisted with a punch. Did it with power, but couldn't beat a man who, in his Portsmouth career, has been in splendid form. Montari, fine pass. Chore. Good running by Benjani. Nugent's in the middle. Benjani. Oh, he's gone with all his foot! Chance for Nugent! And a brilliant defensive clearance gives Portsmouth the corner. Everett got back at him. Benjani moving to the left. Fisted in low. And look at Everett's challenge to deny Nugent. Steve McLaren among 20,510 at Fratton Park tonight. Scholes. Here's Brown. Ronaldo. Oh, how about that? Troy turned the wrong side and Giggs crept in behind him and James saves Portsmouth. Bamboozling skills from Ronaldo and Giggs sliding in, nearly gave Manchester United the lead. Lovely work by Ronaldo. Giggs with the corner. Giggs low! Oh, how did that stay out? Finished with a flick! And Scholes coming in was a millimetre away, surely, from chucking Manchester United back into the lead. Came back out to Giggs. Low and deceptive finish, and there was Scholes! Manchester United breaking. Tevez. Lovely pass to Ronaldo. Tried the bender, off James Tevez! He escapes.
Change of balance, deft. Keeper couldn't hold it. Utaka. Benjani, Nugent. Oh, he fell at the crucial moment. On his home league debut, the opportunity has come and gone. Oh, Ferdinand and Carrick was uh, taken down by Montari. Well, he's going to have to watch. It's a second yellow. Two yellows mean a red. Montari booked for the earlier foul on Ronaldo. Swept in. Took away Carrick's standing leg. Benjani working hard at him. But it's a corner to Manchester United nonetheless. Nani's corner. Oh, the referee wants a word. Oh, what's happened here? Ronaldo was involved. And the referee was very close. A Portsmouth player turned under. A Portsmouth player was holding his face and a red card has been shown. Ronaldo has been sent off. The contact from Ronaldo's head looked minimal, but there should be no contact with a forehead. None at all. Ronaldo moved his head forward in the direction of Hughes, but really was it enough to merit a red card? There's goals! Brilliant effort! Terrific effort from the best player on the pitch. While others were losing their heads, he was trying to use his. Carlos, a controversial end to the game. How did you see the, the Ronaldo sending off? Well, it was, uh, was difficult, but uh, what I know and uh, what I could uh, watch from my position, I think uh, there's no excuse if you follow in this kind of traps. Uh, the players, they were about uh, this kind of situations. If uh, uh, something happened, we must keep our mind cool and uh, don't react because this is exactly what uh, um, the players uh, from Portsmouth, they, they expect that uh, uh, we follow uh, in the trap with this kind of uh, controversy situations. How did you see the sendings off? Uh, I thought that we were both harsh. Uh, the little one, Solomon was a little bit severe. Uh, but Mr. Bennett goes to, to the letter, and then both occasions. The, the, the second one, the one on Richard Hughes, I didn't have a good view of it, um, but obviously he's seen it, he's right up close to it. But I think both were rather harsh. What was the difference between the first half and the second half? It's the first half is the formation we're using. We're using 4 3 3. And in the second half, we changed and it, was, it went well for us. That's the sort of analysis we need. It's <laughs> simple. You should be on this programme. <laughs> Brilliant. I mean, a terrifically exciting game in the end. Well, it was. The first half was a total bore, I thought. Manchester United totally in control. Um, you know, Portsmouth have got defensive problems and it looked like they were playing, trying to play really tight. We weren't any adventure. Nugent up front of his own. And then Harry, great piece of management at half time, you know, it's, uh, brought two substitutes on, changed the system, threw men forward, which is always dangerous against Manchester United, goes on the break, they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, but it paid off for them and um, it was refreshing to see because not a lot of managers would have did that, but um, it definitely paid dividends then and the second half was absolutely fantastic watch, it really was. Yeah, some thrilling stuff, but yeah. United two games, only one goal, only two points. Um, Tevez made his debut, but there seems to be something missing up front. Well, obviously the, the big thing was Ronaldo being sent off. Um, that was the big story of the night. You obviously forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens here with Richard Hughes? There's a scuffle in the box. Ronaldo's trying to get past him. Another scuffle there. You know, the head goes into him. Steve Bennett's right next to what happens. There's not a lot in it, but not a lot, still too much. And the minute you react like that, then you're going to get sent off. And, it's not uh, like him, Lee, is it, really? I mean, not, he doesn't usually respond to that sort not of Not really, and to be fair to him as well, he gets lumps kicked out yeah. of him every week, doesn't he? And to yeah. be fair, he keep, keeps his calm, 
But you saw him walking off there. He wasn't really complaining that much. He knew he'd moved his head. Mm. And if you do that, you're going to get sent off. He's young, he'll learn. And if he doesn't learn, his manager will have something to say about it. Yeah. I, I may have um, referred to it earlier. <laughs> but um, United not scored many goals in the first couple of games. Not, not created too many chances either. Yeah, well, the, the, you know, there's the sort of lack of strikers and as much as the two or three of them are injured. And Tevez made his debut tonight and he didn't do badly. Yeah. He did well for the school's goal. But he's not going to gamble and get in the box. This is the first one. I mean, Vidic and Scholes are in there. The second one, we pick up Tevez here. When Ronaldo, Ronaldo gets it, the danger area is there. You've just got to take a gamble. Dart in there, but actually gets the other side of the riders. It's a brilliant ball in from Ronaldo. Should have made more of it. Very, very similar here as well. Back post, there's the danger area. Gamble. Gamble, get in there, correct. When Ronaldo plays it in, you know, there's nothing there. It's sort of static. And, you know, I mean, he's not a striker. He plays off the front man. Yeah. He plays in a free role. And until they get the strikers back and, and in form, then there's going the to be a death is, of is goals. He's a centre forward as well with Giggs on one side when he goes out wide at left and Ronaldo on the other side. You know that there's quality coming in. So yeah. it's, it's not even a gamble, is it? Nine times out of ten, you'll probably get on the end of it. Well, you've got to make your way in there. I mean, the, the ball coming in for the right hand side before Ronaldo gets sent yeah. off or just waiting to be buried. And unfortunately for Manchester United, nobody on the end of them. Yeah, but fortunate for Portsmouth, great result for them. They've got a striker of their own, new to the Premiership, David <laughs> Nugent. Didn't well, have the I, best of he nights. probably struggled a bit on Saturday and, you know. Big fee. This is what this is when Portsmouth were in there saying this. He gets on his heels here. If he's on his toes, he's in there first. That is a brilliant opportunity after they just equalised. And this one, this is an even better chance. You know, one touch and it's in the back of the net. But the first touch is bad, and then unfortunately for him, he falls over. Um, We've all done that, though. <laughs> I know you've done that. <laughs> but Harry Redknapp's a good manager, and, and when he goes in the transfer market. He doesn't make many mistakes, so I think he'll come good. But it was a great result for Portsmouth. Yeah. The entertainment was fantastic. It was a great night. And it was a great atmosphere yeah, at Fratton Park. Fantastic. Uh, when the Reading manager, Steve Koppel, saw the Barclays Premier League fixture list, he could have been forgiven for throwing a rare tantrum. However, after an excellent draw at Old Trafford, he was his usual calm self as his side now faced Chelsea. Last season, of course, Chelsea's win was overshadowed by horrendous injuries to two of their keepers. A year on, John Motson was at the Medeski Stadium. It's hardly a hallelujah handshake, but it marks the end of the incident which has haunted this fixture. Stephen Hunt and Peter Cech can now get on with their respective careers, the only legacy being the headgear the Chelsea goalkeeper still wears for protection. It was Reading's goalkeeper Marcus Hanneman who was the hero at Old Trafford on Sunday when their man-to-man -man game plan deprived the champions of two points. Steve Koppel goes for a more adventurous 4-4-2 formation tonight. Into the side come John Oster, Khalifa Cissé for his debut, and Shane Long. Cissé at £600,000 from Boa Vista, one of only two summer signings so far by the club that finished one point off a European place last season. Chelsea also make changes. Steve Sidwell's first start comes against the club he left in the summer in what looks like another progressive 4-4-2 formation for Jose Mourinho. Sidwell replaces the injured Michael Essien. Paolo Ferreira comes in for Glenn Johnson at right back. Didier Drogba is fit to start now and replaces Claudio Pizarro. Ferreira. Right Phillips, there are three in the middle here. This is dangerous for Reading. It's Drogba! But it was offside. The uh, assistant on the far side, John Flynn, raises his flag. Well, it's not by a lot, but you've got to say Drogba is. It's on by Doyle towards Long. Back it goes to Hunt. Chelsea fans are booing him. Oh, not a bad ball in. This is Oster again. And set up there. Oh, it was James Harper. Deflected for a corner. That's Ingham Arson challenged by Kalu. Hunt's getting 
applause from the Reading contingent down there and something rather different from the Chelsea fans. Oh, and that was close. Inge Marsen came in behind Dubry there and he threw the Chelsea marking. I think from his reaction, he feels he might have done better here. He gets up. Well, he's beaten Kalu, hasn't he? And he needs the raincoat tonight. Right, Phillips. Free kick. It's Cissé, the newcomer who's been booked there. Substitution for Reading. Andre Bico has come on, the Cameroon international, in place of Michael Dubry, who has a groin injury. Straight replacement at centre back, but his first job is to go up for a free kick. That's Inge Marsen with the header. Oh, and Petr Cech didn't make it. Surely, is BK going to score? Amazing. He's only been on the field for about 15 seconds. And Andre BK has scored his first Premiership goal for Reading. Having that moment just come on after 29 minutes. And Petr Cech on the ground where he suffered that horrific injury last season. As a disappointing moment of a different kind here. Inge Marsen who wins the header and in that crowd Petr Cech punches and completely misses it and BK tucks the ball away he did score a goal in the Carling Cup for Reading last season but that's his first in the Premier League and could it have been any easier or any quicker having just come on Cech has completely lost the plot there and BK can't believe his luck it's Reading 1, Chelsea 0 say Hunt waiting far side. Oh, this might work for him. Or for Doyle. <laughs> Steve Coppola's come downstairs. Must be pleased with the way the game's gone so far. Here's Hunt. Oh, nice back heel to Doyle. Three in the middle for Reading. John Oster! Should have scored, oh, and the follow-up is missed as well by Harper, but John Oster there could have made it 2-0 and perhaps should have done. James Harper had the follow-up, but Chelsea here were pulled apart again. It's Hunt with a cute back heel to Doyle, and when the cross comes in, Oster's lost Ashley Cole, but he hits the post. Jose Mourinho has lost patience with Chelsea's first half performance. Two substitutes on at the break. Claudio Pizarro, who scored on Sunday, has come on. So too has John Obi Mikel. And off go Paolo Ferreira and the ex Reading player Steve Sidwell. Drogba. Oh, and here's a chance. And Lampard has equalised for Chelsea. Within two minutes of the second half starting, it's Frank Lampard. So, an instant response after the half-time team talk from Mourinho. Well, this started over on the left-hand side and Lampard was making his run here and nobody tracked him, in all honesty, from midfield. He brushed aside the final challenge and just managed to get there in front of Hanneman. He gets away from Cissé, I think it is here, who hasn't caught up with him. He heads it down as Shorey challenges and tucks it away past the goalkeeper. Frank Lampard, 21 goals for Chelsea last season, scores his first of this season. Mourinho's men are level. This is Drogba with Inge Marsen. Kalou. Drogba wants it back and shoots. Oh, and scores. It's DDA Drogba. It's two in five minutes for Chelsea and they lead. And DDA Drogba, who scored 33 last season and who was on the bench on Sunday, is off the mark again here took it first time with his right foot and buried it in that corner of the net where Hanneman just couldn't get swerve on the shot 
and Chelsea one down at half time and now 2 1 ahead. Shorey to Hunt. And it's Graham Murty again. The shot's on here, really. Oh, it's hit Doyle. And it's still come. Oh, and Cissé nearly Doyle. Patrick's team looked uh, in charge when they went off at half time, but uh, it quickly turned round. have caught that but Ingi Marsen has missed out here and Chelsea are on the march again with Kalou four of them up in this attack this is Maluda Lampard's made a forward run as well and that's Pizarro That's a free kick, and uh, it was Pizarro who went down. And uh, I think Cisse here is in trouble, and he's been booked already. And his debut is going to end in a dismissal. Well, Dean was almost right on top of the incident there the referee does Pizarro make too much of it one or two Reading players thought he did but he pulled the shirt there first of all of Oster and then it was Cissé who was presumably accused of stamping they've had two sendings off in consecutive games now Steve Coppel's team Kitson at Old Trafford now Cissé and in the last few seconds Murty BK's in there, and cleared by Ben Hayim, back by Gunnison. This is Doyle. And there's a mistake there, and Harper has sliced it. Oh, and Hunt has completely missed his kick. He's got the ball back, though. He's going around Lampard. Still Hunt. No penalty. Oh, and look at Hanneman joins in again here. Well, the three minutes of uh, added time are up, and Mourinho gestures for another three points for Chelsea the game hinging really on the first five minutes of the second half Chelsea made two substitutions at the break and all of a sudden Lampard equalized and Drogba put them ahead and that's the way it stayed after Reading had led at half time through BK final score at the Medeski Reading one Chelsea two it's six points out of six for Chelsea Yes, it's a good start, but we know what Premiership is, and uh, every game is difficult. In every game, you can you can lose points. In every game, you have to try to to add some points. So we have six. We have to try the next game to go to seven or nine, and that's the history of um, of the Premiership. It's a high tempo first 45 minutes, and you know half time we were perhaps a little bit disappointed just to be one nil up. Uh, very respectful of the class of the opposition, but you know we done a good job, and then. I knew they'd make changes at half time. We were aware they'd make changes. Uh, they did. It just gave a different complexion to their play. And uh, for five minutes, we fell asleep. Well, it was another good game, and uh, Chelsea already have a four point advantage <laughs> over United. It's a lot at this stage in the season, isn't it? Because they don't drop many points during the season. So um, they should be worried, you know, Manchester United, because it is a lead already. And they played well today, Chelsea, especially in, the, in that second half. And Steve Coppel's right. Uh, they had a game play in the first half, Reading, and did really well. Completely different than how they played at Old Trafford on, uh, at the weekend. They man to man at the weekend. Today they were a bit more expansive, played 4 4 2. Uh, and they got it right first half. But Mourinho. He's got the Midas touch when it comes to substitutions. Now, we talked about he? substitutions before uh, Harry Redknapp at, at, at Portsmouth. But today he got it right. And when he made the substitutions at half the time, he brought Mikel off. Sidwell was playing ahead of Frank Lampard. We'll see Sidwell here picks the ball up. Frank Lampard's behind him, just thinks of making a run, sits in midfield. And that happened a lot in the first half. Sidwell's advanced to Frank Lampard. We don't see that very often, and that made Frank play a lot deeper. Changed at half-time. Mikel came on, who made the difference in midfield. Sidwell came off, and that just put a different complexion. Look at Frank here. This is what, flick from Drogba, driving into the box. 
and that's why he got 21 goals last season. That's what he's good at. And this is another drive for him. Drogba picks the goal, this is the second goal. Look at him driving through the middle of the park. Drogba gets a bit of luck, wins the ball back, ends up getting the ball back on the edge of the box. The two central defenders don't close the ball down because they've got Frank Lampard to sort out on the edge of the box, so they stay off, gives that little bit of space. Great. And what a finish that is. Yeah. Terrific stuff. I mean, we talked about United having perhaps a mm. few problems up front, been a bit light there. For Chelsea, it's at the other end, they're a bit suspect. One or two people missing. We keep going on about John Terry being missing, but every week something crops up. This is the, this is the goal. Big long ball. Ashley Cole gets caught far post. Cavallo doesn't do him any favours. The header comes in from Inga Martin. I think Doyle's offside. There's a case for offside, but Czech makes a decision, knocks everybody out of the way, open goal for Bike. Bike but the, the, the point is, look at this again. They win the ball on the left. What four defenders? They don't close the ball down. He can pick his ball out. Ashley Cole gets a little bit flat-footed again. Far post. Hits the post. Great chance. And this is even worse for me. This is a throw-in. Look how easy, easy it is for the right-back to cross the ball. Mm. If you're going to win championships, you can't let the ball come in your box that easy, Al. Mm. <laughs> well, it is. It's, it's true. I mean, I'm just thinking, you're talking about John Terry, but when John Terry plays, they're, they're definitely a different side. Yeah. And, you're talking about one of the best near post defenders the game's ever mm -hmm. seen. So that area is totally under control. Yeah. Then, you know, then he doesn't play. It's like indecision is yeah. final. The ball comes in the end of the box and they're saying, what do we do next? Yeah. And even the keeper's coming flat. Yeah. The keeper who's usually absolutely yeah. magnificent. Four, he's point, four point lead over Manchester United for Chelsea. You went for Manchester United for the title. No, I went for Chelsea, actually. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, Alan went for, I'm going for United as well, just to disagree with him. I'm having a bad night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing An absolute shocker, by the way. How about um, Reading? I mean, often we've seen the second season's difficult, but... It is, and I, but I think, you know, the, the two games, weekend and today, were completely different. Shows the managers trying things. They just got caught out by a bit of brilliance from, from Chelsea today. But I still think they'll do well this season. They're organised, they've got some pace and they've got some power, and I think they'll do better... Uh, than people think, because it's as you said, it's second second season. Well, I agree with that. I think I think they'll be fine. I, mm. You know, if you look at the first two fixtures, Man United away, Chelsea. <laughs> Couldn't home, be much you, Well, you probably sell for one you point. Wouldn't. You know, they, they they played well up at Old Trafford, but today I thought they did really really well again. And they've got this thing where they can get men forward. They have, they, they've got good players. All right, they've missed one or two. They probably need to buy one or two players again, but. I think that um, mid table. They're running uh, up a few yeah, suspensions yeah. as well. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, a bit harsh as well. Yeah. A little bit uh, lucky fight. there to me. Uh, well, after their um, opening day victory at West Ham, Manchester City supporters were understandably optimistic that their 226 day wait for a league goal at the City of Manchester Stadium might just come to an end. Their opponents, newly promoted Derby County, were hoping it wouldn't. Watching this one for us, Steve Wilson. Oh, Blue Eyes is back, and Sven is certainly the king of a major mood swing at City. Eight months without a home goal last season has almost been forgotten in the euphoria of victory at West Ham. Ericsson picks an unchanged 11, Kasper Schmeichel makes his home debut, and told City are no nearer to signing Italian keeper Marco Emilia from Livorno, though they do hope for three more faces by the end of the month. Derby make one change, Rob Earnshaw is left out. Former Manchester United reserve David Jones starts in a midfield three with Fagan and Pearson supporting Stephen Howard. Derby's much admired Giles Barnes is still injured. Stephen Pearson here for Derby. Kasper Schmeichel thought about coming and didn't. Well, Howard wasn't far away from getting a touch on it. But when it was driven in with real pace from Griffin, Schmeichel was backtracking. It's Mears. Oh, that short island onto it very quickly. Elano here for Manchester City. Petrov now. Here's Johnson. Close down by Oakley, who did well. Johnson writes the challenge. Still Johnson! Still waiting, Manchester City fans, for their first home goal since New Year's Day, but Johnson wasn't too far away. That's nicely worked, and here's Griffin for Derby. Oh, and the slip from Richards was very nearly costly. It's only half away, it's Jones. Johnson recovered. Handball right on the edge of the penalty area. And Man 
Manchester City were in some disarray here. David Jones wants a Manchester United into the City wall. Has another bite. That hit Bianchi. Falls to Petrov. City could break here. Petrov. Ireland tried to nick it through to Petrov. Tyrone Mears did really well. Manchester City's albatross is proving difficult for even Sven to shake off. There's the new chairman, Dr. Taksin Shinawatra, and alongside him, Richard Scudamore, top man of the Premier League. Almost a vote of confidence from the Premier League to Shinawatra. Dunn's mistake, straight into the path of Fagan. Oakley down the middle, and Pearson has got him behind Richard Schmeichel. Came and saved in the end from Pearson. Best chance of the half falls to Stephen Pearson. He couldn't take it. Micah Richards here. Now that looked like a push. Johnson. Elano. Johnson has all kinds of room. Johnson! two from Michael Johnson comes three minutes before half time and exactly 13 hours of football since their last home goal look at this finish outside of the boot this is calmness personified and Manchester City lead Derby by a goal to nil. It's done. It's well kept in, and Bianchi is there. Well, it's an excellent uh, combination, Choluca with the cross and Bianchi with the shot. Davis. No foul given. Fagan square. Schmeichel did well. Schmeichel did really well. Fagan put it square. Stephen Howard was waiting for a tap in. Freddie Flintoff there, former uh, England cricket captain. Maybe again. Sven Joran Eriksson, former England manager. Sure, he can't be again. Giovanni, good pace. Oh, Elano nearly got there, Ireland nearly got there. Well, the upshot is a derby throw, but Manchester City very nearly got themselves a second goal here. Excellent pace from Giovanni. A minus touch at the moment. Bozhinov to Ireland and Manchester City have two wins out of two under Sven and amidst all the foreign signings it's a young Englishman who won it Michael Johnson with a super finish to a very good Manchester City move Manchester City good value in the end for their victory they have six points from two games going into Sunday's derby Manchester City won Derby County nil. I said uh, the other day that I hope if we, if we score before Christmas, and we did it in the <laughs> first game at home. That's good, and there will be more. We acquitted ourselves reasonably well against a very expensively assembled squad out there, and uh, you know I thought we did acquit ourselves well with some good chances first half. Should have gone in front. That was a turning point, and then we lose that silly goal just a couple of minutes before half time. But it has to be said it was a, a very very good finish. Everything seems to have gelled on the pitch, you know. So um, for us to come into the two games and pick up six points, it's a it's a great start for the manager and gives the fans a boost too. There will be great optimism, of course, here for the match on Sunday against Manchester United, which Manchester City could lose and still be above United. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
that's a big, big one, of course. It's a big derby, and uh, Manchester United, the champions, uh, last year. So, of course, we look forward to that, and uh, I hope we are ready, as we have shown Saturday and, and tonight. What a start for Sven, what a start for City, <laughs> and you're obviously a Manchester City fan. Big we grin on my that. face. And, yeah, yeah they, well, what a great start. I mean, Fantastic. ironic, really, as well, with all the signings that they've made, that uh, the homegrown lad, Michael Johnson, mm. great sporting name, pops up with a, a tremendous goal, and uh, ex-youth team captain, 19 years of age, picks the ball up in midfield here, Beats his man, no problem, shows strength. Little one-two with Alano. And what about this for a finish? Absolutely fantastic. He looks a player. He does, he looks a player. We see it here. Alano, watch this run by Bianchi. Just creates the space for him. He goes inside. Johnson carries on his run. Composure, one touch. Sees a defender coming in, thinks, I'll bend it to the outside of my mm. foot. And he was absolutely brilliant today. He was up and down the pitch all day long. And uh, text messages all... I'm getting them all night. I'm even going off now in my pocket. But you can't believe the transformation. If you watch Manchester City last season, if you were talking about creativity, it was Joey Barton and Joey yeah. Barton alone. Yeah. But then he was too deep, mm -hmm. really, to influence the final third of the pitch. Whereas now they've got about four or five that mm -hmm. can get it done and play it. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned Alano on, on Saturday, but he gets in that position really well. Does it well? And he just gets that little bit of space yeah. and plays it around the corner. And Bianchi like, looks like he can yeah. hold the ball up as well, which is something perhaps mm. they've not had before. And an another young man doing well. Two clean sheets for Kasper Schmark. <laughs> making, his, <laughs> making his dad proud and his obvious similarities. He's a ringer, aren't he? isn't he? Nothing <laughs> like his dad. <laughs> Look at this. Where have you seen this before? Somewhere. The Here star he comes. Star <laughs> that's, that's uncanny. Isn't rolling it? back the years. And where have you seen this before? Don't want to be a centre back now. There we go. Watch this. <laughs> a Schmeichel rant. He just lacks the red nose. He spits on his gloves <laughs> like his dad as well. But two clean sheets. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely fantastic. What about Derby County? I mean, at one point from the, the first two matches, but they, they cutted themselves well then. Well, they? again, they've, they've shown what we see in Saturday tremendous spirit and character. And, but whether that will be good enough in the long term, we'll have to wait and see. Mm. I think they'll struggle, to be honest with you. I just think that there's teams around them. They're organised, which is a good start, but whether they'll score enough goals or not, I don't know. Time will tell. Uh, before we bring you the rest of the action, let me remind you of our weekend fair. It all kicks off with Football Focus on Saturday lunchtime, BBC One 12.10. From 2.30 on BBC Interactive, there's score. All the goals as they happen, courtesy of the red button. And final score gets underway on BBC One at 4.30. Later that night, there's Match of the Day, 10.15 BBC One. Then round the weekend off with Match of the Day 2. That Manchester derby, of course, Sunday night, BBC Two at 10.35. Back to tonight's football and the top two from last year's championship, Birmingham City and Sunderland. At St Andrews was Alistair Mann. They both scored at Chelsea, adding to the optimistic view that the for sale Capo partnership could be a prolific one for Birmingham. Roy Keane opting to change his front two. David Connolly brought in to partner Saturday's super sub, Michael Chopra. Two. Whitehead. Halford. Edwards. Chopra moving away to the right. Here he is. Halford in support. Header up and under rather by Larson, and it's gone away for the corner. game where neither side has really dominated this is the longest spell of pressure by the team Shane trying to make something of it Chopper was almost in there just bounced away from him and then he tried to get on the end of the loose ball but Shane with the acrobatics looked like holding on the back of four sale by Nosworthy and the noise will tell you that that is indeed the verdict of Keith Strack. Now we're going to have our first genuine attempt on goal. We are indeed, and it's going to be the opening goal. And it counts as well. Kelly spins away in joy. The time just seemed to stand still. It's an own goal, I think, off McShane. Kelly was the man who was celebrating. It was his head, and then... Well, it's gone in, that's the most important thing. And it will probably be an own goal by McShane rather than Kelly's. Oh, 
Wallace. Come towards Connolly. It's a decent ball. There was a shove there, you know. They really did look as though there was a shove on Connolly. And no wonder he's disappointed. On first viewing, I think it was Kelly gave him a nudge. There. It was more than a shoulder charge, wasn't it? He Stroud had a good view. Felt it was just uh, one of those collisions that happens quite frequently within the game. Edwards. Lovely gliding running style of his, but he's stopped by Moanda on this occasion. And Sheffield to Capo to Forsell. Nice first time touches, and Kelly will benefit from Forsell's intended pass from McSheffield. Here is McSheffield. Teasing ball. Cleared just about to a two -hoo. Good foot in by Larson. Nafti! Just off the side of his foot and away for a goal kick. Larson again for Birmingham. Scuttling by the challenges. Looking for an option. Poking it through. It was a clever idea. McSheffrey almost on the end of it, but Craig Gordon was alert to the possibilities. Well, Roy Keane was incensed at half-time that his side hadn't been awarded a penalty. And indeed, we believe he went in to see the referee about it and asked the direct question, why didn't we get a penalty? And suddenly, Chopra's in! And Chopra scores out of absolutely nothing! Well, what a way to introduce yourself to your new supporters. It's just innocuous. Juru's header, it's a cushioned one from a two-who. Suddenly, it sits up for Chopra. And he thumps it beyond the helpless Colin Doyle. Nice play to bring in Nafti. Pepo again. Keeping possession somehow, finding Forsell. And now O'Connor. And still, has he won it? He most probably has. What a debut for O'Connor. Delight for Steve Bruce. And he scored on his last two appearances for Scotland, Gary O'Connor. He's now scored within a few minutes of coming on as a substitute for Birmingham. And it could well prove the winning goal here tonight. Here's Edwards. Striding purposefully, gracefully, still going. Lovely run from Edwards, brilliant play, and John off the bar. What a fantastic piece of wing play by Carlos Edwards. One of the most dynamic runs of the evening by some margin. He just kept going, and he had the poise and the balance and the awareness, and John battered the bar with his head. It looks as though Carlos Edwards has injured himself in that run. He's pulled a hamstring, and... Uh, they're now down to 10 men. Here's a two who on towards John. Handball is the claim. Handball is the verdict. Sunderland have a free kick. Gene Stroud waited to see if there was an advantage. There wasn't one. There's the handball against Juru. It's Wallace. It took a deflection. That is a marvellous save, but it's going to go in anyway. And it's 2-2, and Stern John, who was a Birmingham hero not so long ago, is now celebrating at St Andrews for the visiting team. Look at that save, that is outstanding. And you have to feel for poor Colin Doyle. But the most important statistic is that it's 2-2. Courtesy of a former Birmingham player, Stern John. Um, I don't think the performance was great. Maybe everyone was a bit flat after the weekend, obviously the, the big high of beating Tottenham. But, you know, the players again showed a, a great desire and determination to get a result and uh, to score so late in the match. We're disappointed because we thought the referee has missed a big... Well, the lad's done great to do it. He's laid on top of me goalkeeper and the ref impeded him to get up. And the referee's missed it and the linesman's missed it, which is disappointing. But uh, I'm not here to bleat. It's disappointing when you concede in the last minute. But I've got to take a few positives over the two games we've played. Did you think that your moment had gone when you headed against the bar? Yeah, um, as, a, as a striker, yeah. Sometimes, because especially in the Premiership, you only get one chance. Um, sometimes you might not get another chance, but uh, at least I, 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 
I kept focused and I, and I stuck with it, me and the whole team, and we got a, a point in the end. Mm, quite uh, <laughs> quite oh, a brilliant. finale, yeah. a degree of controversy over the deciding goal. It was um, a great match, four goals, and Steve Bruce was right. He's not bleating, but he was right. He was right. He mm. was right. Have his a keep, look at it. His keeper makes an unbelievable save. Deflection off the free kick, that is fantastic. But watch O'Donovan on top of Doyle. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a wrestling match. He, you see he from cannot the, believe behind it. Behind the goal here, once he falls over him, he thinks, uh, his right arm, I think I'll grab hold of his right arm. What's this? <laughs> Don't let him up. They just hold him down. It's a submission. <laughs> OK, I'll ask you both this. Which one of these two sides will fare best in the Premier League this season? Um, I think Sunderland. I think some of them have got a little bit of impetus, something about them. Um, mm -hmm. Great start, and I think they'll fare better than Birmingham. I think Birmingham are quite organised. I think they'll do all right. I don't think they'll go down, but I think suddenly it's no coincidence that, that Roy Keane's team equalised two games in the 90th yeah. minute. Yeah. That just shows about the managers, doesn't it? It's got a bit of um, the manager's spirit. Mm -hmm. and they both stay up? Yeah. OK. Before we bring you the other two games played this evening, a quick look at what happened at White's Hart Lane last night where Spurs entertained Everton. Ivan Gaskell reports. For Messrs Bent and Johnson, an opportunity to impress. Get a foot in the England door, you might say. But while the watching national coach is keen to fill the striking void, he may also have noted it was an English defender, Jolian Lescott, who actually nudged Everton in front at White Hart Lane. It was another English defender, this time Anthony Gardner, who levelled for Spurs, though. In a role reversal from the first goal, he lost his opposite number, Lescott, this time. Tottenham may have been touted as serious top four contenders this season. The squad haven't quite yet picked up the message. Leon Osman rather quicker off the mark to put Everton in front. Arteta's fine delivery had England keeper Robinson and sub Ricardo Rocca at cross purposes. The sort of moment opposing managers rather enjoy. But just as his rather more perplexed Spurs counterpart Martin Yoll might have been contemplating emergency action, the half time discussion was made rather more heated. As Dubs free kick wrong footing Paul Robinson, though in fairness it's pretty hard to legislate for a deflection like that off the boot of Zakora. Spurs needed to change the course of things and quickly. It might have been different had Dimitar Berbatov's header sneaked inside the post. Darren Bent's follow-up, let's just say, misdirected. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't too long before he made way for Jermaine Defoe, but he had no better luck. Though that owes much to Tim Howard's instinctive near-post save. There was just time for Andy Johnson to try his luck once more in front of his international manager. His performance certainly earned praise, though, from his club boss. While Tottenham's man in charge was left to reflect on a rotten start to the campaign. We have to take it on the chin and uh, pick ourselves up because, you know, every team will have a bad spell and uh, hopefully it's, uh, it's uh, only, only the, the first one and, uh, and we will do better after that, I'm, I'm certain of that. But it's, it's, it's a big blow and, and a kick in the teeth because, you know, we really wanted to have a good start. In these days when you're a superstar after 10 games, it seems, you've got your old growlers in the team, I call them, Phil Neville, Lee Carsley, Alan Stubbs, I mean, the role they play. I don't know if their wives would be happy you calling them <laughs> old growlers, uh, but uh, what they are is they're seasoned professionals, really good players, good men to have at your football club as well, so I'm very fortunate. What do you say now to the, to the kids in the team? Number one in the table, but forget it, what? Forget tonight, as soon as we walked in that dressing room, forget tonight, you know, get some food down, you get some drink and uh, make sure you rest, don't be, don't be going to the Trafford Centre and uh, shopping all week, just, you know, just let your partner go out, let the partner walk the dog and just get home and rest and put your feet up and make sure that you're fit for Saturday. Why? <laughs> Wise words indeed. <laughs> uh, great start for Everton. Lovely to see one's former clubs at the top of the table. Yeah, and they deserve it because they've, they've come into the season again really well organised, not made an awful lot of sign signings. Bain's obviously injured, but I think he's going to be a good addition. Um, but they're organised. It's just whether they'll score enough goals. Johnson's key to them. Mm. And I think probably got one of the best midfield creators in, in, in the league in Arteta. Mm. I think he's brilliant. Um, but fair play to the manager, he's organised them in a way that they all know their jobs 
and they're powerful and they're strong and they, and, and they overpower teams. Well, awful, awful start uh, for Spurs. Terrible to see one's former teams <laughs> at the bottom of the league. <laughs> History tells you it's really dangerous to think that Tottenham are going to do well. <laughs> and, uh, honestly, it is. I mean, the, the, you, if you look at the forward players that they've got, you think, this is incredible. They've got so much talent. We said it on Saturday, but you will tell me differently. But if you cannot defend, then there's absolutely That's nothing there for you. And they can't defend. I said on Saturday, without Ledley King, they would be in trouble. That back four just basically isn't good is, enough. The defend. evidence was there last night. They can't defend from midfield no. either. The back four is getting exposed all the time. They need to regroup. <laughs> Early days. <laughs> Uh, our final two games feature four sides looking for their first point of the season. Shortly we'll see Fulham face Bolton, but first it's Middlesbrough versus Wigan, watched at the JJB Stadium by Guy Mowbray. Having scored on debut at Everton on Saturday, Antoine Sibierski gets his first Wigan start tonight in for Caleb Fulham. Middlesbrough unchanged and hope Yakubu's luck against Wigan doesn't change. He's scored all three times he's faced them as a Borough player. Sharna finds Sibierski. Valencia's made the move out to the right. Plays it in for Lanzar. Let's it run for Sibierski. It was a good chance. And it was a pretty good looking Wigan move. Neatly played across. And left well by Lanzar. He heard the call from Sibierski. And Southgate has dismissed talk of this being a relegation match as being very premature. This is Jason Kumas, collected the ball in superb style, and it just opens up for him now. Kumas eventually forced wide, and Taylor did well to block the cross. Kumas continues, Valencia, Mario Melchior. Melchior tumbles, Julio Arca the offender, Wigan free kick. Kumas has already made up his mind, this is his. Already his name being sung by the Wigan fans. Kuma strikes, and Schwarzer has to palm it behind. Fire towards goal with some velocity. And Schwarzer definitely took the right course of action. Sibierski. Eski. Looks as though he was going to put his head in where it hurts. Wigan will press on regardless with Valencia. Most of the attacking football is being played towards Middlesbrough's goal. Eski wanted a free kick. Referee let it go and it was to Luis Antonio Valencia's benefit. Lanza. Kilban. Goes Sibierski. Rigger attacked it strongly. This is Valencia. Schwarzer can't hold on and it's gone in. Wigan have the lead and Sibierski claims the credit. Speculative strike from Valencia. He hit it well enough and Sibierski was quick to react when Schwarzer just found the ball too hot to handle. In his level best, Burroughs Australian keeper to try and get a hand to the ball second time around. Look how quickly Sibierski was in, and too strong for Davis too. Kumas. Here comes Andrew Davis to win it for Middlesbrough, and catch Kumas in the process. Downing. Fierce effort. Kirkland beaten, and the post is still shaking. Much, much better for Middlesbrough this. Well, Stuart Downing put everything he got into this shot. That's an absolute stinger. Kirkland wouldn't have kept it out. Mido is all set to become a Middlesbrough player. Just a bit of administration to be sorted out. He's here to watch his soon-to-be teammates in action tonight. Emil Heskey caught late. Kumas fires one in with typical accuracy. Schwarzer can't get to it. And it's only just over the top from Mario Melchior. 
Now, Schwartz's expression suggests that he feels he was impeded. I'm not so sure. Started to come, hesitated, then that's his. But he couldn't get through the crowd. Downing. Riggett will go for it. Lee will go for it. Wheater is still up there. Stuart Downing once again. Desperate defending from Wigan Athletic. There's Wheater. Blocked by Valencia. Great work from the Ecuadorian player, and he's off on a run here. Shana's with him. Kumas is with him. Heskey is up there. This is Paul Shana. It's the side of the net that ripples. Well, there's, there's no easy games at this level, no matter who you play. So, um, you know, we, we talk about the new signings, but the, they, they did excellent tonight. So, um, you know, we, we've had to bed them in very quickly. Um, um, and long may that continue, you know, on the performances that they give us tonight. It's a young team and, and I know I've got to live with the mistakes that happen sometimes. So it's no use crucifying them. Um, we, we have to stick together as a club and as a dressing room. And we know that it, this is a tough little period. We've got a few experienced players out. So um, I'm convinced we're going in the right direction. But we knew this early part of the season might be tough for us. David Healy only needed 60 seconds to score his first Premiership goal on Sunday as Fulham led Arsenal for 83 minutes. Laurie Sanchez sticks with the same 11. Elhad Duf is one of three changes for Bolton, who also have Haider Helgerson replacing the injured Kevin Davis. And it's like somebody's turned the shower on at the moment as Nicky Hunt takes this throw in. Ooh, that's an awkward bounce. Oh, never let it bounce in your own penalty. Yeah, oh, and he's dropped it. Oh, it's a goal. And that's an illustration of how difficult the conditions are. Tony Warner, who was a hero for Fulham and Arsenal on Sunday, has dropped the ball right at the feet of Haider Helgerson. But they let the ball bounce. He came to claim it, clattered into the back of Zat Knight, and Warner just spilled the ball that must be as, sorry, as slippy as a bar of soap. And Helgerson gobbled up the chance. Whoa, what a mistake. Fulham trying hard to get into the Bolton penalty area, but they've lost possession. And here's Diouf, and he spots an Elka now on this left side. He's got a lot of space to pick up pace here. On his left foot, has he got sight of goal? Oh, he had a Warner's finger tipped it away. Well, it looked as if he was heading for the bottom corner. Well, he's made amends for the earlier slip. Still early in the first half, but Sammy Lee already looking half drowned. Just look at the rain. Chris Baird takes it short, back to Smirtin. Here's Baird, corner now, put out by Samuel. It's difficult to pick out the players on the far side as Fulham take that corner, headed up by Zach Knight. And that's loose, there's a chance here! David Healy, who got his first Premiership goal at the Emirates in the space of a minute on Sunday, has chalked up his second in the first half here against Bolton. Oh, there's going to be a foul against Diouf, and he reacts. Safe to say that he doesn't agree with the decision. And it looks as if the referee, Lee Probert, has already reached into his pocket to show a yellow card. Well, Simon Davis will take it, as ever, Zap Knight has come up from the back. Here's Smirtin. Oh, it was a nice strike! Fulham are in front, there was a massive deflection. And Smirtin gets his first goal for Fulham. And it's Jasper Leinen's turn to look bewildered. Smirtin was a fair old distance out. But there was a big deflection, which took it beyond the goalkeeper. Well, Bolton took the lead here, but they've only had two wins in the last 13 games, and it looks like they'll trail at half-time. Or will they? Warner came off his line, and he needed the covering player, Zat Knight. Not hit with any pace by Anelka, but it was certainly heading goalwards. 
Boris Yaskalainen's turn to drop the ball, and he's pushed over Healy. Oh, I think they've got that wrong. Referee has given a free kick to Bolton. Well, who'd be a goalkeeper in conditions like this? But have the officials got this wrong? He never had the ball in his grasp, Jaskalainen, and it certainly looked as if he obstructed David Healy in his efforts to get to the bouncing ball. That could so easily have been a full and penalty, and maybe it should have been. And here's Diouf. It's around the first channel. A good ball in Nolan! Just needed a touch. And Kevin Nolan couldn't deliver it. Sammy Lee's not yet been a winning manager for Bolton. This is game number four. Well, Nicky Hunt with the free kick for Bolton, just inside their own half. Just chipped up for them to scrap for. That's a good header down. That might stretch and just got something on it. Here's Sid. Sets up the chance. Oh, honor to deny Anelka. Well, he has now more than made amends for the early slip which gifted Bolton the opening goal. Here's Diouf. Oh, that's well struck. Didn't have a lot to aim at. Would he have squeezed that past the right hand of the Fulham keeper? I think he would. Here's McBride to Stephen Davis, he's got a clear run forward here, and he's got it into the middle to Kamara! It was an absolutely brilliant pass to pick out the player, just on as a substitute, but he wasn't quite up with the pace of it. It was a horrendous night weather-wise, um, you know, the second half got a bit frenetic, but after giving a, a strange goal away, in the, you know, um, to them, I mean, it was like a bar of soap, I think, and, and slipped out of Tony's hand. Um, we went on, got the 2-1, went two and up um, and in the second half when Tony needed to make some saves he carried on where he left off on uh, Sunday with some terrific saves. At the end of the day the most important thing is the results and we won um, and if I helped towards that um, even after making the mistake you know I'm, 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 I'm happy with that. I thought our lads played very very well again throughout the game but particularly in that second half when I thought I felt that we dominated and as in football you don't always get what you deserve and that's no, no discredit to, to the opposition I just fully believe that we, you know, we dominated for long periods particularly in the second half. Vital wins for Wigan and Fulham, mm. but, you know, Bolton's struggling. Sammy was happy with the performance, but yeah, you, you spotted I, some differences from last I, I thought they were a little bit unlucky. There were lots of chances in the second half, but sometimes the basic and the fundamentals, the, the things that they were absolutely brilliant at. For example, the, the second goal that Fulham scored, the second ball, Bolton have always been brilliant at the second ball. Now, what you do is at a corner kick, you put a man at the edge of the box, and his priority is the second ball. They'll all move all over the place, but he doesn't move. We circle Nolan here, this is last season. Circle Nolan, watch everybody move here, and he'll still be in that same position because his priority is the second ball. You can move there, 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 and what you're supposed to do is not let the opposition get a free hit. And he was absolutely brilliant. But tonight, comes in, second ball, nobody there at all. And what happens, Smerton? Free hit, ends up in the back of the net, and that's cost you points. And um, again, the chairman of Saturday talked about playing more football than, than under Allardyce, but sometimes when you do that, you just forget where you were strong. Yeah, we've just about run out of time, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, what odds on the Premier League table being like this in May? Everton atop, with Manchester City, Chelsea and Sunderland occupying the other Champions League places. Manchester United are already four points off the pace in 12th place and Tottenham are bottom after losing their opening two games, but I'm sure Spurs fans will agree it's far too early to have a league table. Some good results for British clubs in today's Champions League qualifiers. Arsenal, Liverpool and Celtic all look well placed to advance to the group stage after today's first legs. Well, that's it from us on the night that United dropped another two points and Ronaldo went nuts from all of us here. Good night.